Hi, I'm Kat. Today I'm showing you how to make this miniature knife block set, removable knives, and cutting board. I started with the wall of an aluminum tea light candle and cut it into small manageable pieces. And then I used the conversion ruler to go on ahead and sketch in approximate sizes of the knives. Leave a little space at the bottom. You're going to want to put a tab in later. And this tab will help um, the knife blade to go into the clay for the handle. And then you can either use Google Images or if you have a knife set to model these after, then use that, whichever one you prefer. I'm using a Cuisinart set to model these after that I have in my kitchen. And I'm still traveling, so I didn't have any floral wire with me, but I did have earrings. I make jewelry um, for part of the living, so <laughs> I um, used a earring piece and used my blade of my knife to sharpen it. So that way it can go into a little bit of a point. And then I also used an emery board to just uh, round that point out a little bit. For the serrated bread knife, I'm using my needle tool and I'm cutting in small notches at the bottom of the blade. And then turn this over and do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to warn you, um, this particular knife is quite sharp. They will cut you. I cut myself like to the point that I drew blood um, on this particular knife that I'm making right now a little later in the film. Of course, I don't show you that. You don't want to see my blood, but it is sharp and you do want to be careful. Next for the Santuki knife, and I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, I put in these little, mm, I'm not sure what they are, but they're little holes of some sort. They're just slight and faint, but I put those in and then I flipped over the knife and using the edge of my X-Acto blade, I put in, a, I kind of sharpened it at the edge to give it a small brushed um, appearance at the very base. And then finally were steak knives. I cut out six identical shapes. Not every knife set has these, so you can omit this step if you prefer, but I wanted to add it in. And I decided to make my steak knife serrated, so I used the same technique as I did with the bread knife. Then for scissors, I cut out a shape like this, and then put in a little tab at the bottom, that way I can attach a head pin and make the scissors open and close. Of course, they won't cut anything, but um, it's still just cool to they open and close. That's always nice. And then finally, I wasn't sure of the direction I wanted to go with or whether I wanted to make the handles um, a stainless steel or if I wanted to make them um, brush steel or black or white or brown or wooden or whatever else. So I just used a generic white to start with and that way I could paint them in whatever manner I wanted to toward the end. So then I cut in the shape that I wanted using the knife blade as a guide. And then I use my ball tool to just round it out and refine it. And this is where the tabs come in place because now you can bend those tabs upward and use that to put into the um, clay. So bend the tab and just slide the tab in between um, the clay. This is gonna take, you're gonna have to get down a little closer to your clay and, and use that, but you could do it if it's possible to slide it in and then you could bake it just like that. When it comes out, of course, you can straighten your blade at that point. For the sharpening, uh, the sharpener, just a small cylinder of clay at the bottom and a small circle of clay at the top. Use a little TLS to secure everything. And then uh, blend the circle with the little cylinder. And then for the scissors or the kitchen shears, um, round oblong circle of the thingies or ovals. That's, that would be the shape, yes. Um, flatten it out and then I use my ball tool. And I made a little circle on the inside where a doll's fingers would go. And then stretched out the very base of it so that this handle could fit into it. And then finally onto the knife block. I used um, my X-Acto blade to just kind of, you know, uh, put in where I'm going to put my knives. That way I have a nice layout. And then I cut those out, baked it. That will make your life easier. And then after that, I traced the shape to make a trapezoid type of shape. Um, and this is gonna form the sides. I cut two of those, just stacking one on top of the other. 
but don't press, just stack. And then pull them back apart and bake them separately or attach them to the top of the housing and then bake them at that point, whichever you prefer. I baked them onto it while they were still wet clay. And then I used my sandpaper at this point. I did a back for it and used the sandpaper to smooth everything out before I moved on to the steak knife housing. Now, because the knives are unbalanced, they are aluminum at the front and clay at the back. Clay is much heavier than the aluminum and they have a tendency to flip forward. So I put little teeth on the inside to keep that from happening. And then onto the steak knife housing, I am using um, a blade to cut into a little rectangle, just little teeth or toes or whatever they are. And then I built the rest of the housing just like I did the top. And then I used an 80 grit sandpaper. And that sandpaper allows it to give it a nice wooden texture without it being wood, of course. I finally decided to go with black for the handles of the knives, so I painted them. And then I wanted to go with something a little different for the housing of the um, knife set, so I decided to make it an espresso. My sister just had some lovely espresso colored furniture, and I like that color for furniture and everything else, so I just decided to do the same thing here. So I used a little black paint first to just kind of give it some tonal variety underneath and then add a little red and then finally a splash of thin brown. Once that's been done, you can go back and repeat the same steps over again. Black, red, brown, black, red, brown until you have it in the color that you prefer. And now, of course, you can see the bottom of the beige portion through the um, the top where the knives go. So just go on ahead and give that a nice coating of brown or black too. For the cutting board, I just made a small rectangle and rounded off the edges. And then I use my ball tool to um, straighten everything, add more definition and detailing and also to shape in or cut in just a tiny bit of a handle. It doesn't go all the way through the wood, I just wanted to have an indent. Bake it and then I use my 80 grit sandpaper, you can see how thick that is again, and um, cut in some and sanded it so that it gave it a nice wood grain. And then I use my needle tool and sketched in or etched in um, thicker lines for cutting lines. Then I decided to use kind of a stain technique with this but using paint. So I used my brown paint first to just give this some tonal variety and I decided I was going to go with either like a pine or maple, something lighter. Um, so I used a watered down orange after that and just brush that on with a dry brush. And then finally some yellow that's been watered down too. And this time I'm going to just keep brushing into it so that it kind of sits a little bit longer. And then blot it off with your tissue. Once you get it to the shade you want by repeating those same steps, you can seal it. And that's all you have to do. Thanks so much for watching guys. I appreciate you. Bye.